We're gonna use this to lift her up and drag her out and then rotate her around. How do we rotate it? It's gonna be very careful. This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. What's going on guys? So we're here to change these two compressors right here. The one shorted the ground. I found these uh, bad a couple months ago. Uh, getting parts was near impossible. Uh, this one here is 83,000 uh, ohms to ground. This is 92, uh, 96,000 ohms to ground. This one here is still running, which is obviously a new one. So we've got to get these recovered. Got my one, two, three, four bottles of refrigerant. I've got two compressors back here. Truck's just a little bit busy. Got a recovery tank ready to go. This holds 90 pounds of 410A, which, you know, it's a couple pounds there on that. And these compressors are a little heavy. And we've got some new contactors for it. We've got some filter dryers. But we gotta shut this thing down and get it recovered. Uh, this is gonna take a little bit of time. So, uh, should be able to fit most of it all in here. Uh, the refrigerant, like I said, is getting replaced. Of course, if I would have known that uh, I was doing this today, I would have probably brought a trailer with me. This is kind of ridiculous. My try push pull method today. I haven't done it before, and with this being 90 pounds, it might actually be worthwhile to do it. My digital Tisto scale there is capable of running 220 pounds, so we can actually use that if we need. I kind of love it when the lock mechanism don't work because the door's hinge is broke. That's fantastic. We've got her turned back on, which we have the breakers for the compressors off here. So those are dead. We'll double check that at the compressors. That way this one here can still run, allowing us to work on these and recover it. We'll have to get power from down over there to the, uh, uh, for the 120 volts. This is all 460. Look at that, he's back. All right. So we're gonna do the push-pull method here. It takes the three hoses. So we've got the outgoing, side of my compressor going into the suction line. We got the discharge, which technically is the closest thing to the condenser coming out on 3 8 coming into the liquid. We're sucking back off of the vapor, which is up the top. You got this little valve right here. And you got that valve there. I've already dumped in what I can get in it. Using the wireless scale right here. So we'll zero it and kick her on. Now it'd be nice to have a sight glass to show where it's going, which we could have done that with the uh, gauge set. Go ahead and throttle that in. So that liquid technically is not going into the machine. We're doing 410A too, just so you know. So this is gonna be sucking vapor for the most part the whole time. And I'm not being impressed yet. We're only at 33, point, not even half a pound. So we got everything open, yes. I, I've never seen this valve thing here, so this is new to me. Got the valve core removed with the valve core tool. Got the liquid there open. I don't know if it's really doing anything. 0.25, so we're actually losing refrigerant. This ain't even doing nothing. This ain't even working. All right, I just checked online again, make sure I'm doing it right, because I've never really done it. But according to contracting business and the HVAC school, they showed the same picture. We're doing it like they're showing, and I'm not impressed. Something's not right either. This tank ain't right. We got half a pound. This is a waste of time. All right, we're just gonna do it like normal. Okay, we're at a whopping six and a half pounds, which I don't feel is like really all that big of a deal. We valved it off multiple times, making sure that we're going the right direction here and then there's no check valves. I mean, obviously we're coming out hot on the discharge. If I close my valve here, it ends up raising the pressure. If I close it over there, it goes zero. Everything's open. Uh, just aren't, isn't a whole lot of liquid, I don't think, coming through it. So this is my ladder piece for the six foot ladder, eight foot, 10 foot, whatever, and then a the handle for it. So here we've got the piece here, this slides back and forth. This is a little loose, because there's always gonna be a little play in there. We're gonna use this to lift her up and drag her out and then rotate her around. Okay, we're pretty much down to zero-ish. We've got a little bit to go, make the old EPA happy. 46 pounds, so we've lost a little bit. Just a little bit. We're gonna take this off the pallet. That way it makes it a little easier to maneuver. 
pallet's kind of screwing us too, as far as uh, height. How do we rotate it? It's gonna be very careful. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and cut this pipe right off the compressor so we can get this out. We're gonna use a bandsaw on this right now. That shavings is not gonna get into the system because we're gonna cut that back here with a pipe cutter once we've got these units out of it so that we can actually uh, piece them up. So I'm gonna break the rules a little bit with a cutting type device, but trying to get a pipe cutter in there that's big enough for that is not gonna happen. Uh, at least not with anything I've got. So I took all them brackets and shit off back there that way we had to play. Good deal. This is probably the least amount of shavings you're gonna get and you get just that little bit there. That's it. Which obviously would screw stuff up. But by doing it with that, we're right here. We don't have much fall here. I'm gonna cut it with the pipe cutter like you're supposed to. This is gonna allow us the room to get this out of here. You're not gonna get a pipe cutter big enough to do, I think that's inch and a half or bigger, I forget. Either way, getting a pipe cutter that big is gonna have a handle all the way out here. You're only gonna go this far. You can't do it. You know, yeah, I could have unsweated it, but as tight as this is, at one point or another, you need to cut it. So we've got these oil equalizers on here. I know that ain't the right word, but basically what it does. Look at that, the oil came out awesome. That's good, that's what we need. I've got rags there in case. We wanted to switch the caps off of the new compressor to these, but unfortunately, we really can't do that. I'm not going to, oh, uh, that looks good. Look at that O-ring there versus there. that O-ring there. Here, do that. One looks good, the other one looks smashed. That might be where our leak was. Nice. I know, that's what I was thinking. I mean, it got smashed in there pretty good. So, we'll drain that happy monkey in there like that, and we'll get this thing out of here. Okay, we're gonna back the tow truck up. Got the old tow truck here, so we'll back that thing up and we'll pick them up. Keep your old toesies out of the way. Yeah, it looks a little leany, but you know what? It's doing pretty dang good. I, uh, it's bright. It ain't bent a thing at all. I mean, that's just some slop in there. I don't care what y'all say. I would, I'd rather have this than what I've got. None of my welds are broke. So all that there's just straight across. And I ain't even a full-time welder, just what I've learned over the years. Mainly working in a machine shop prior to this crap when I was way too young to be in one. So we can cut back maybe five, six inches and then just put it right there.
my end. Yep, shine it in there so that people can see. Looks clean to me. Look over here. Clean to me. Might be a little speckle of some dust in there of some sort. That's just oil. No nope, oil. Get the suction there. Make sure it's happy. Also, I kind of think before we get too far too, we should probably get the oil line on. Because that's going to be the hardest thing. We're not going to have a whole lot of play with that. Let's get the oil on first then. Okay. We're gonna hook these oil lines up in the back. Here's our bolts. We're gonna hook these oil lines up on the back first because it's gonna be really hard to manipulate that copper. We've got the brackets undone right now from up here, which has pretty much made it really easy there on uh, to, to move them around. So you can see right there, we got a raised edge there. So the seal's gotta go into the compressor first. We'll put a little bit of nylog on it and we should be good. Here we've got the oil equalization line on. Everything's done, you've seen that. He's getting the brackets ballpark, but we've got to get these sized up. What we're trying to do is keep the compressor sealed as much as possible so that we're not you know absorbing moisture into the oil. using my knife straight up and down works pretty good. Screws and uh, fancy measuring devices. So we're good to go there, but I'm a little afraid if we have to move that, you, you'd be, you don't want to brace it in yet because if we have to move it for that, then we'd, we'd be screwing ourselves. So we're just going to keep her shut up as good as we got it. Probably a better way to do it. That's the reason why you should be making the video. I'm just a hackeroni. Yeah, this one here is gonna fight me a little bit. There we go. All right, so I think we got it here. Didn't use a tape measure at all, buddy. And first cut, we're good to go. Not bad for a hack and jack. It's a hack and jack job. Oh yeah. Hack and jack.
Hack and Moe, there's Hack and Jack. Why Hack? Well, watch out for Hack and Moe, because Hack and Jack is here. I don't give it. I don't give a Jack. Whatever. Well, I'm ready to burn this hog dog in. Okay, we're gonna go ahead, purge that direction, pop this apart. What? Yeah. Do you? All right. Cool. I won't even. I, I, there's some leaking here too. So we'll let that go for a second. Obviously I can't shove it through the compressor, but we can at least purge it out as best as we can. Now you can force it through the suction. Problem is then you'd have to pressurize the whole thing. I don't think I have any ball valves. I have a ball valve there and the idiots put the ball valve on uh, the uh, pressure port on the wrong side. So I can't even utilize the ball valve, the next ball valve, if there is one back here. So we're just gonna do our best to get her purged out. So we got that all burned in. Everything's done there. We haven't wiped it off yet to make it all look pretty. Definitely look better when we do that. It's time to do the filter dryer there. There we go. Looks all better now. That's what the inside of the pipe would look like if you weren't using nitrogen. But you heard that 150 freaking times, I'm sure by now. We did switch it to the suction. You got this plate here, it has, you know, grooves on it. We're gonna wipe that all off. There's a seal right here that tends to leak. If you, sometimes you gotta replace that. It comes in the filter dryer. I usually like to replace it every time, but I gotta come back tomorrow uh, or 24 hours later and change this filter dryer. Wow, look at that crap. That looks really wholesome goodness, don't it? Yeah, screen. yeah. Do this. Got a lock nut there and a piece to hold it. Got a felt thing there. There's your screen. That's how it catches the crap. We're gonna use some brake cleaner on this. That's got a lot of chunks of stuff in there. Yeah, that thing's just a flipping mess. Look at that screen. Does not look good at all. That's just that's does not look like it's been wiped out for a while. Let's just say that. This is a burnout. I think it was burned out once before. Not sure why they keep losing compressors. We can't tell when it's not running. So we're gonna get this thing all cleaned up. And like I said, we'll come back and we'll change it. There's a little mesh thing there behind that. Okay, here's your filter dryer. That usually comes with a key somewhere over here on the side, but doesn't have one. So next best thing, grab your Leatherman and you just take that thing off. There you go. Now this is an HH, so it's gonna have a little better characteristics to take care of that acid. You can tell this one here was not, at least it does not appear to be. You can see a big difference there in the pattern. It's more zebra-y. Okay. You got this. I trust this mesh a little more than I do that other. These things here kind of suck. It's like nastiness on this thing. Yeah. That looks a little better. Huh, whatever. We'll replace 
that seal tomorrow. I ain't gonna replace it tonight just to have it destroyed tomorrow or whenever I'm coming back. Now tomorrow I have a ball valve here and an electronic expansion valve on the other side, which is still not gonna make it very easy. Hopefully it holds and works like it's supposed to. Might not be the first time that things don't work like they're supposed to, then you have to recover the charge. guys so I guess 25 pounds after doing the 20 and tighten flange bolts and start pattern 25 to 30 pounds and then leak test pulling her down right now we're using the big uh, 8 CFM or 10 CFM whatever this thing is gas ballast on valve cores yank still this unit is 60 tons but we're, we're making progress it's just slow all right, so we're spraying this down. Oh, oh, there's a leak right there. Look at that. Oh, that's our problem. All right, so we ended up taking it back out, put the seal in there. I decided to reuse it, because that's what everybody else would do. And I cut a corner and I got my fingers cut off. So here I am doing it again. Yeah, this is why I never cut corners. Because I always get caught every time not taking a chance. So we made sure that each one of the edge corners went in there. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, just one of the things, stuff go wrong, and it always does when things are already taking too long. So we're tweaked back to 30 pounds on this hunky monkey. Okay, we triple checked it because I, I knew he was having a hard time pulling it back, so. Let's go ahead and use my pliers that everybody hates because they're jealous. There we go. Spray it. The go-go juice on there. As of right now, it's not leaking. Can't see down there. So I'll get over here and take a look, but I think we got it. Okay, so we're starting over again. My fault for not doing a little pressure test. Did the bubble there. Got these labels so you'll know which one's which. Leftover stickers. Still waiting, we got, we got some time here. I knew something wasn't right when it wasn't dropping. All right, so this is not getting down, and that don't lie to me. So we're gonna valve off the pump over there. We just put a generic compound gauge on there. This thing is never taking this long. I think it's going up. Is it? I can't see. I think we're about two digits, three digits down. This is our luck. I mean, it's uh, 520. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming up. There's a big leak somewhere. All right, guys, that's where we're gonna have to stop it at. As you can tell, this uh, this crap show didn't go very well. So we ended up putting nitrogen back into the unit. So for a holding charge, we had to get a hold of the people in charge to get permission to continue forward. It says right in our contract or our quote that anything above and beyond what we quoted has to be approved. So at this point, we're getting ready to go back on Monday and go ahead and start looking for the leak. So I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch the video. There will be a part two. If you guys enjoyed it, please hit the like button down below. If you haven't subscribed, I don't know why you haven't, please do so. Click the notification bell. And until next time, I will catch you guys on the next one. Later.